welcome, welcome, welcome to another installment of uh, Teaching Via YouTube. Um, I want to say hello to everybody and let you all know that you will have uh, your next paper assignment in your inboxes. As a matter of fact, I believe that you either already have it or it's in the email that this link is part of. So please make sure that you take a look at that. If you have any questions or concerns, email me and we can discuss them. What I want to do right now in this brief time that we have together is to discuss writing in a way that I haven't discussed it before. The other day, I watched a documentary on stand-up comedy. And it was during that documentary that I heard some stuff that I felt, oh, this is perfect for the whole writing process and the things that we actually put down on the page. Um, so when it's talking about stand-ups and stand-up comedy, uh, one of the few things that I heard that I thought was really applicable is how humor makes topics that are not exactly the easiest thing to talk about more palatable. There's, humor makes us take in information that we would bristle against a lot easier. Am I asking you guys to be funny? No, I'm not. I'm not asking you guys to infuse humor in your writing, though if you do, that's great. But what I'm saying is that humor makes things easier. And comedian Eddie Griffin told this uh, story to make this point, how back in ye olden days, uh, the court jester would be brought into the king, and the king would say, make me laugh. And the court jester would tell jokes and be funny, but what he's really doing is communicating to the king that there are problems in the kingdom. He's telling the king who wants to decapitate him and what steps you need to do to make sure that, you know, you keep your head. Humor allowed the jester to do that, and that's what stand-up comics do. Basically what stand-up comics are doing is they're communicating in a more effective way in a way that makes something that's more confusing or difficult to swallow, um, easier to swallow and easier to understand. And that's what your job as writers is, is to take something that people don't necessarily know a whole heck of a lot about and make it so that they get it, make it so that they understand it and that it's easy for them to digest it. That's what stand-up comedy does. That's what I'm asking you guys to do as writers. Now there was another segment um, talking about the concept of, of when, when stand-up comics are bombing, when they're not doing very well, when there's somebody out in the audience who's heckling them and just like talking smack the entire time, it's difficult to keep going. And what Chris Rock said was that 99.9% .9 of the population at large, that's basically everybody, when something is going wrong, if you're speaking in front of an audience and something is going wrong, or if you feel like you have lost your place and you can't quite figure out where you need to go, or that thing that goes through our heads when we do talk and do write, um, we start thinking that we're not really being effective. And what does 99.9% .9 of the population do when that happens? They speed up. They talk faster. I'm sure that if we all thought about it, we've all been guilty of it. We all just start rattling things off. It doesn't necessarily matter if they're connected, if they are cohesive, if they're informative and stimulating. We just want to get away from this crowd and this situation so we talk so much faster. What Chris Rock said that stand-up comics do in that situation is they actually slow down. When someone up in the balcony is heckling them or someone in the front row is throwing a drink at them and, and, and cursing them out, when they are just bombing, when they can't remember the next joke, they don't speed up just to get off stage. They slow down. They really do. They slow down. They might start interacting with that jerk up in the balcony. They might start asking questions of the person in the front row who threw a drink at them. They take a breath and they look down at their notes, or they scan through all of the stuff in their head, slow down, think about the situation, think about what's going on, and they adjust. And then they go on with their set, 
or now their set is completely different with new information with this jerk up in the balcony now instead of talking about I don't know airplane food now they're talking about some jerk uh, and and how people in Tulsa Oklahoma are, are the worst right like and then they go off on this whole other thing it's funny everyone gets their money's worth slowing down allows us to do that <laughs> the only other comparison that I can think of is I'm not sure if any of you guys have ever driven a manual transmission car a stick shift um, I don't know if they make them very much anymore, but if you've ever driven a stick shift, an automatic, just you put it in drive, you hit the gas, you hit the brake. It, you, you don't have to think about anything. But if you drive a stick shift, you have to put in the clutch, throw it in the gear. Once you hit the RPMs, then you have to throw it in another gear after you hit the clutch. You have to make sure that your gas and your clutch pedals go at the same time. There's a lot of things going on. And you're driving. So I remember um, my director, when I was in high school, told me the same thing. When you're on stage and things are going a million miles an hour, right? You have a lot of things that are in your head. You have to think of your lines. You have to think of your blocking. You have to think of everybody else's lines and blocking. You have to take in what the audience is doing, how the lights are. You almost fell off the stage. Your sword doesn't come out of its sheath. Uh, for some reason, your wig is slipping and you're sweating into your eyes. There's so much stuff going on. He said, it's just like driving a stick shift. You're going down the road and you're in third gear, going 40, and you see in the distance that there's a red light and that there's cars there. But it's a busy intersection, and there's a couple of alleys on that street. Instead of just making a decision and, and throwing your third gear, slowing, hitting the brakes really hard, um, instead of upshifting and downshifting and doing all of this stuff while keeping your eyes on the road and all of that stuff going on, push in the clutch, throw it in neutral, you're not in gear. You don't have to do anything. All you have to do is throw your car in neutral, give yourself a minute to apprise yourself of what's going on, make sure that there's no cars turning out here, that there's no squeegee guy who wants to clean your windshield, that the light doesn't turn from red to green right away and then you start jiggling up it out, of a, out of gear. Throw it in neutral. Give yourself a moment to think and then make your decision based on all of this new information. It will keep you from killing your engine, it'll keep you from killing pedestrians, and it'll keep you from hitting the car in front of you if you just slow down and think. Slow down. It works for a manual transmission, it works for stand-up comedians, and why shouldn't it work for us as writers? I'm sure that you guys have all heard me make the comment or see feedback in your papers about machine gun sentences. You've probably also seen comments that I've made, um, especially towards the end of a paper, where you guys are just like throwing information out. You just can't wait until this paper is done. It's like those people who speed up on stage. It's like those people who jam on the brakes and you still have 150 feet before you even hit the intersection. You're just jamming. You made a decision and it's not the best decision. Those machine gun sentences are the weirdest things too. They are really boring. They're really boring. They sound like this. There was a place and the name of the place escapes me. When I can't remember, it irritates me. Could be I can't remember. Could be I choose to not. Let's move the song along and try to find the plot. There was a girl and I don't know her name either. She gave me love and I swore I'd never leave her. If I did, I'd come back someday, and I'd find her. Maybe I will. I should write down a reminder. Machine gun sentences. That's the opening of a really fun song called Someday I Suppose by the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones. I bet you guys didn't know. It is featured prominently in the uh, warehouse scene in Clueless. Great movie. I saw it on a blind date. My point in quoting Someday I Suppose uh, from the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones. Ding! Easter egg. The reason I did that is because th those lyrics are machine gun lyrics. I've read papers where your guys' actual words on the page sound that rapid fire. And what I tell everyone to do is to get away from those machine gun sentences. 
I want everybody to slow down, think about what it is that you want to communicate. Don't just jam on the brakes. Don't speed up so you can get your set done right. Don't ignore the guy yelling at you or the person throwing a drink at you. Don't ignore any of that stuff. Slow down. Get your head right. Make sure you understand everything that is going on and how you can fit within that conversation that you, no matter what, are in charge of. It's not like your paper writes itself. You are sitting in front of a keyboard. Don't write if you're not ready. Slow down. Get up. Take a walk. What I used to do is I would take a walk around my complex. What I would do is I would get up and I'd wash dishes and I'd get a cup of coffee and I'd come back and sit down. Take a break. Take a moment. Don't just rattle things off. Don't just throw out all of this really great information. And I know that you guys are finding great information in your research and the things that you're looking up, whatever reviews or peer edited um, articles that you're finding. You guys have a lot of really great information. I know that you do. But I was told by my dissertation um, chair several years ago when I was starting to write this 300 page paper to get my PhD. He said, we had a discussion and I was just throwing out all of this really smart stuff that I had just been reading and I've been picking up. Um, and he's, he stopped me and he said, I'm, you're a smart guy. You know all of this stuff. That's really great. But what are you going to do with it? Slow down. See what you could do with all of this information. And take all of this information and put it down in writing. But you need to slow down. And you need to connect everything. When you're on stage, you need to connect everything that's going on. The lights, the sounds, the people, your material, the material that you just heard. You need to slow down and take in your environment and understand what everything, uh, what all of the things are going on. When you're driving, especially in a manual, uh, a manual or a stick shift car, you need to understand what is going on so that you don't kill the engine or that you don't slam into somebody. You need to do the same thing with your writing. And I am going to include um, a little quote to this effect in uh, your emails with your assignments that this video will be attached to. All right, so I just wanted to check in, see how everyone's doing. Are we all fine? I hope so. I'm doing all right. It snowed the other day. I don't know why. It's April. Either who, I trust that this finds you well. I really, really encourage you guys to reach out if you're confused about the assignment that you have coming up. It's your paper. And just basically, if you need clarification on anything, email me. I've had phone conversations with, with several students who've needed it. Uh, we can figure out something, okay? So I just want you to use me as a resource, use each other as a resource, email each other, talk to each other, see if you can't have somebody look through your ideas or whatever, all right? But use each other in a good way. Use me in the good way. And I can't wait until I get to see uh, how you guys react to your rough draft process. You all did it really well before. And I'm looking forward to it again. So, smart people, go out and do your thing.